So I've been slowly plotting my way through Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, or at least the first book of Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, The Dragon Bone Chair. And when I say slowly, I mean like a chapter every day or two. So, at that pace, I just hit chapter 7, The Conqueror's Star. Now obviously if you read George R. R. Martin, this should kind of make you think of the Plague Star just hearing the title, but not to get too sidetracked. This chapter comes just after the appearance of a red comet. Yes, that's right, a red comet, just like in A Song of Ice and Fire. And what's even more interesting is just prior to that, like just prior, we are introduced to Pyrates, the Red Priest. So the couple of you who checked out my post about this uh, probably noticed that I mentioned that there was a lot of similarities between Ice and Fire and this book series. And I can totally see where George R. R. Martin is taking a lot of inspiration, and I mean heavily taking inspiration. The First Men, the Children of the Forest, are very similar to the men that inhabited the territories where Memory, Sour, and Thorn takes place alongside the Scythi, who are similar to the Children of the Forest, elf-like, long-lived race. And the Rimmer's Men, who bring iron and uh, iron warfare to eliminate the Scythi and these other men, are basically very similar to the Andals. The Hayholt is kind of like the Hellholt when you think about how it's said. Or the Dragonbone Chair is kind of like the Iron Throne, in a way. But I think more than like kind of these sort of semi one to one kind of things, uh, just the language in general is really, really uh, something George R. R. Martin took huge inspiration from. Like even phrases like the old gods and stuff like that are used in the exact same way in Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn as they're used in Ice and Fire. The newer god is a singular god that's modeled off Catholicism, whereas the old gods are a pantheon of a more pagan style belief structure. But so much of the general language and descriptors are also just grafted, you know, kind of straight over. When you read the book itself, it has a very similar feel to it. I know it's kind of a hippie, weird way of trying to get it across, but check it out. Go read the book. It feels like you're in a similar world. It feels like you're in a similar setting. The vibe is very similar. There is clearly a lot of homage going on here. And from what it seems to me, it seems like the scope of this story is going to be a little bit narrower. Uh, Simon seems like he's going to be our main lead view that we're pretty much always going to be seeing through, even though we drift off into other characters periodically. That could change, I don't know. But I can definitely see the certain slice of Game of Thrones, the book series, uh, you know, Song of Ice and Fire, like the Stannis slice of it being a lot of homage, maybe even several one-to-ones. The Comet was the most striking for me, I think, because it is really just like, exactly, like you totally... There's no denying that the Red Comet in A Song of Ice and Fire is a direct link to this book series. Like, it is, you are, if you read Memory Sour of Thor, you are meant to be pulled right back into that book series when you read about the Comet. So what do I think so far about the whole thing? Um, it's very well written. Like, if you enjoy the kind of visceral, tangible nature of George R. R. Martin's writing, then you would definitely enjoy Memory Sour and Thor, at least from what I've read so far, uh, six chapters in. I would say in a lot of ways, you might even feel like George R. R. Martin is being a, uh, you know, a giant ripoff. I don't think that's wholly true. Uh, I think that it is more homage than direct copy. And like I said, I think he had a really good reason to do so. The book is really well written. The only part that I encountered that I thought was gratuitous, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a certain violent act committed by Pirates when you very first meet him that almost jarred me out of my suspension of disbelief. Like, what? Really? No one ever said anything about this behavior? Like, no one is just, like, gonna say anything? But um, short of that, just, you know, phenomenally uh, phenomenally well-written. And I don't know Pirates yet, so we might find out that Pirates is constantly acting like this and no one's ever checking him. Again, don't want to give too much away. I've already said more than I should. But um, you should check this book series out. I would highly recommend it so far. The connection to Song of Ice and Fire is deep. The It's very obvious that George R. R. Martin is doing a lot of homage and a lot of dragging over from this book series. And with good reason. This guy is, a, is an excellent, excellent writer. This guy being Tad Williams, and the book again being The Dragonbone Chair in the Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn book series. And I was told recently that the sixth book is coming out. So there is going to be another book in this series. And obviously I'm going to be trudging my way through this book series and trying to get to the end, you know, because we need something before wins, right? Jokes aside, I'm going to be going through the book series because it is really good, and I've had a great time reading what I've been reading so far, even though I've been moving very slowly. 
So there you have it, kind of my initial thoughts on Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, some crossovers. I uh, think the language and many of the direct religious connections and world setups are very much inspirational to George R. R. Martin. Highly recommend the book series. I'm looking forward to reading more, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys if you have read it or if you start reading it. I'm going to try to come out with something more substantial here in the next, you know, couple weeks, but uh, just wanted to drop this thing in here because I started reading the books and I thought it was cool. So thanks for watching, and I will see everyone later.